Hey everyone, so the other week I was searching through GitHub looking at uh, examples of malware and malware scanners just to see what was out there and did a very simple search for eval base64 decode and we get our usual results of base64 scanner, uh, re a decoder that handles a very specific set of calls, uh, a cleaner, some more scanners, but then down here I noticed that I was getting actual PHP code in the descriptions of these uh, repositories. So out of curiosity I went into those repositories and found nothing. There was literally nothing in this repository. So that got me wondering, where is this code? Where is this code actually being stored? And it turns out that it's being stored in the description of the repository. Now, you might ask, why does that matter? Why do you need to worry about that? Well, it's because you can retrieve and execute that code very, very easily with just a simple PHP script, or if you want it to be run on the client side, a JavaScript application, just using GitHub's repo API. The nice thing about GitHub's repo API is that it returns things as JSON. So if you do a simple curl to that, to one of these, Say, for example, Rafa Nazmi v7, you get back all this wonderful information about it, along with the full code in that description. So I put together this script that will take that output, it will decode it, and then it will do some string replacements to clear out the the excess uh, backslashes. And when we run this against Rafanazmi's, what we get is a very easily executed block of PHP. Now, let's take a look to see exactly what Rafanazmi is doing here. So we're just going to take this, add the PHP tag up here, and now Let's just go in and break this apart to see what it's doing. We want to carefully step through this and make sure that it doesn't execute. So we're going to just do this. Here we have the usual Zura decoder uh, parts. again. So this is taking the entire file in takes the full contents of the file. If B is 0 then it takes the substring of between these two indices. Well we've changed that now so let's go figure out where those were in that was index 655 on the file so let's see where that is on the original file 655 so that starts here so that starts with the Z1. Let's go to Z1 and see what that 
in what index that is. Z1. So we are at 549. So let's go and change that to 549. Now, hey, check it out. We have a uh, little check to see if it's been modified. So now let's change this again. So we're at 657 now. So now if we go here, it's looking at the file. It's looking for the second option. So in this case, B is 2, which means that it is B1, B2 here, substring of this, of all of these. So we need to figure out what that is. So 933. So it's looking for if. So the function is being passed in the remainder of this file and it is. Okay, so actually this is relatively straightforward. What it's doing is it's comparing checksums. So here it has a checksum that is uh, 40 characters long because it's a SHA-1 hash. And it's comparing the SHA-1 hash of this with whatever that is, and then it's going to return the GZ inflated contents of that. So because we have our indices set correctly, this should just work. So we should just be able to take this, turn it into an echo, and there you go.